Creative coders, today we're going to learn how to add inspiring images to your app. And by the end of the video, your app will flip between two of your own images when the button is pressed. You know what time it is. It's time to learn big. We've already learned to work with Apple's SF Symbol system images, but now we're going to add our own images to the UR Awesome app. So you're going to need your own images. You can use images of PNG, JPEG, HEIC. Check Apple's documentation if you want to use another image format, but those three should cover most of the still images that you'd have on your camera or that you'd find on the web. To follow along with our lesson, just make sure that you name your images image zero through image nine, all in lowercase. And if you don't want to use your own images right now, each app in this series has a set of files that you're welcome to use. You can find these files at bit.ly slash prof-g-swiftui-files, all lowercase. And if you go into the folder named you are awesome files, then click on the images folder, you'll see a bunch of properly named images that I've created. Now I'm showing the images in list view, but you can click on the squares in the upper right to see them in thumbnail view. I love adventure travel, so these are just images I've taken while traveling, and I've modified them with goofy, some might say corny, inspiration phrases. I'm going to go back to list view, then I'm going to click on the top image, hold down the shift key, click the last image, and right click and select download. Now my images are downloading to my downloads folder, and when your images are downloaded, find them on your computer. Most browsers save them to your downloads folder by default. Safari unzips the downloads automatically, but if you have another browser, you might have downloaded a zip file. If so, just double click the zip file and it should decompress into a folder. Now the folder probably has a long weird name, but if you go inside the folder, you'll see images named image zero through image nine. So now I'm gonna select all of my images and I'm also gonna launch my You Are Awesome Xcode project. So we resume where we ended off at the last lesson. And now we're gonna add our images to the assets catalog. It's the same place where we created custom colors in an earlier lesson. So if your project navigator files aren't exposed, expose them with the uh, triangles on the left, click assets. And first, why don't we organize things in our asset catalog and put all of the colors into one folder. So I'm gonna select all of the colors in my asset catalog. Don't select app icon. I could have selected accent color too. Feel free to do that if you want. Then right click or two finger click and select new folder from selection. And I'm gonna name this folder colors. And if you click the expansion triangle, you can see that all of our colors are in here. Again, feel free to add the accent color in here if you'd like. And now I'll create a new empty folder for my images. Make sure that you don't have any assets selected. Then right click on the blank space below the list of assets, select new folder, and I'm gonna name this images. And now I'll return to my downloaded images folder. I'm gonna select all of them and drag them into my images folder that I just created in the assets catalog and I can see all the images there. Now we also see that there are spaces for three images in there, 1x, 2x, 3x. It's possible to create several images, some images that are two and three times larger than a given image and those will display at a higher resolution if you have an iPhone that has a retina or super retina display. All you need to do to take advantage of this is to give all three images the same name, but for the image that's twice as large, add an at 2x just in front of the dot extension, and for images that are three times as large, add an at 3x. Now, as a developer, know that the point size that you give your apps when you write your code, sizes for things like frames or shapes, is independent of the density or the resolution of the device. So if you write an app that will display an image in a 300 by 200 space, that's going to be the point size. But if you have a high resolution device and you have images of larger sizes, iOS will try to squeeze the larger image into the same frame size so that that image looks nicer. Now, even though I don't have 2x or 3x images here, those are still going to show up fine on devices that have a high resolution display. So now that I've copied the images into my app, I can return to the finder and throw the folder with the downloaded images into the trash. And now let's head back to Xcode and open up the content view and get our images to display in our app. And I'll restart the preview with option command P and I'll give myself as much space as possible to enter my code. So let's add our image as the first item in our VStack just before the spacer. And we set it up almost the same way we set up system images in the earlier lesson. We type in capital I image, but in code completion, instead of making the selection for system image with the system name label, instead select the one that just says name, this one right here. And remember the underscore means that there won't be a label in front of the parameter that we pass in. So press return to accept this. And then in between the parentheses, we just enter the string, which is the same name as a file that's in our asset catalog. And we don't put the extension at the end. So to use image zero, we'll just put in between the double quotes, lowercase i image zero, no space in there. And hello, friendly ostrich. And then why don't we make this resizable, scaled to fit. We'll add some padding. We'll put in a corner radius, but remember you want to put the quarter radius in before the padding. So we'll do corner radius 30. That gives us nice rounded edges if that's what you want. And how about a shadow with just the radius parameter and we'll put that in as 30 as well. Looks good. And now I think you know enough for a challenge. 
Why don't we change the app so that when it starts up, the image is blank, but each time you press the button, it toggles the image between image zero and image one. Now here's a hint. You'll want to store the name of the image in a variable, just like you do with storing the string that displays in the text view inside of a variable named message string. So to make it easier for us to compare answers, why don't you name that variable that will store the name of your image as image name? So it should look just like the operating app on the right. We'll restart that so that you can see it again. And clicking the button is toggling between image zero and image one. I bet you know how to do it. Pause, give it a shot, and resume, and let's compare answers. So we're gonna find the code to toggle between images is really similar to the code that we've already written to toggle between different strings that we wanna show in our text view. Now, when we do that, we actually created a state variable named message string that holds the string that we show in our text view, and we initially set this to an empty string. Well, instead of using the literal value image zero in our image view, let's instead create a variable to hold our image and the hint in the challenge said that you should call this image name. So under message string, why don't we go ahead and create a new state variable with at state private var image name, lower camel case, equals, and we'll put in the empty string, which is just two double quotes side by side. Then down in the image view, instead of passing in this string literal image zero, we're gonna pass in image name, the variable we just created. And since that's initially the empty string, we see over in the preview that we're showing no image when the app first starts. Perfect. First bullet point of the challenge, done. Then we head down to the action code in our button view, that's this closure right here, and I'll hide my project navigator to give us more code space, and take a look how we update our message string. We set it equal to the results of a ternary operator, that's what's between these parentheses. We see if message string equals equals message one. So this is gonna be either true or false, either message string is equal to message one or it's not. If this is true, then what we do is after the question mark, we use message two. Otherwise, if it's false, that's what's after the colon, we use message one. The result of whatever we get back in the parentheses, message two or message one, is what we update our message string with. Well, we're gonna do the same with image name. We're gonna set image name equal to the result of a ternary operator, so we can put parentheses in here, and we'll first check to see if image name is equal to image zero. So we'll just say image name equals equals the string image zero, and I could have created constants for the strings image zero and image one, but since I'm only using them in one place in the ternary operator in my code, I think this is okay. So we check to see if image name equals the string image zero, and if that's true, question mark, then we'll use the string image one. Otherwise it must be false, colon, we'll use the string image zero. So this ternary operator gives us either the string image one or image zero, and that's what we'll use inside of image name. And as soon as that's updated, important Swift UI concept, since image name is a state variable and we've just changed it, that's gonna trigger a redraw of our image view and that's gonna put our new image in there. That's it, let's check this out. The app starts out with no image showing because we initialize image name to empty string. Then when we click once, we see the ostrich. How come? When we click the button, we're running the code in the closure for the button. We check to see if image name is equal to image zero. It's not, it's the empty string. So we return image zero. State variable change triggers an update. We see the ostrich, which is image zero. Click the button again. When we get down into the ternary operator, we once again check to see if image name equals image zero. That's true this time. So we return image one. That goes into image name. Since image name is a state variable and it's just changed, we redraw the image view and we see the dragon, which is image one. And again, each time we click, this takes us between image zero, image one, image zero, image one, image zero, image one, looking good. Hopefully you got that right. If not, undo your code, roll back the video until the challenge, and try it again until you've got this down cold. Sometimes it takes a second time or even a third time going through the challenge until you've got a concept down, but you definitely wanna make sure that you've got this down. Keep at it, you'll skill up, and once again, we've had big learning in this lesson. We've added our images to the asset catalog. We learned how to create folders to organize our asset catalog. We learned about 2X and 3X images to support higher resolutions on devices with higher resolutions. We added our image to our app and we tackled the challenge where we toggled images in our app. Well done, Swifter. You've got more skills on deck. Keep hacking.